And today I'm going to present Data Prepare, an open source Python library that aim to accelerate data preparation for AI. So uh, as I mentioned, so in the past, I have to convince the audience how important data preparation is. Uh, but thanks to Andrew and G, I don't have to do it anymore. Uh, he recently said that if 80% of our work is data preparation, then ensuring data quality is the important work of a machine learning team. So in fact, the data preparation is not a new problem. I'm very excited to see more and more people get excited about that. Uh, but about six years ago, uh, seven years ago, there's an article from New York Times saying that when they interview a lot of uh, many data scientists, they found that they spent over 50 to 80% of time in data cleaning or data, data preparation without doing any actual analysis work that they are hired for. But most recently, there's another survey from Anacada, which they also interview hundreds of data scientists. And their survey results showing that, as I, I have a quote here, it said that we were disappointed, if not surprised, to see that data wrangling, which is a data preparation, still takes the lines of share of time in a typical data professional day. So then we may wonder data preparation is a bottleneck and it's very important. And there may be some existing effort to solve it, but why this problem hasn't been solved? So in this talk, I want to answer three interesting questions. First, I will explain to you what makes data preparation hard. Second, I will tell you my opinion about why has this problem hasn't been solved in the past. And in the end, I will talk about my vision about how we can solve it as a community in the next five to 10 years. So the first question, what makes data preparation hard? So if you are not familiar with data preparation, I think a better way to understand it is from the cooking perspective. I'm pretty sure everyone have, have, uh, is, have the experience of cooking. So you can ask yourself, when you cook, how much time you spend in preparing food, how much time you spend in actually cook the food. So you may say I spend a lot more time in preparing the food. So for data preparation is the same thing. Before you do any data analysis, you have to collect the data, you have to clean your data, you have to transform and integrate your data. And in the end, you can do some analysis over the data. And if you find the data is not good enough, you have to go back and iteratively do it again and again. So then the question is what make cooking, preparing food hard or what make preparing data hard? So here I list three reasons. The first one is the data preparation is not a single problem. It's not like supervised learning. You use a feature to create the label. It's a well-defined problem. But data preparation has too many small problems. And when you are giving a data preparation task, maybe two people saying I'm doing data preparation, they are doing totally different thing. Maybe one, pe one person say, I'm standardizing the data, the other person say, I deduce the address. So there are too many small problems in order to solve it. You have to solve all of the problems. So the second reason is human have different levels of expertise. And from the cooking perspective, so if you, if it's for someone who have many years of experience in cooking, it's they may prepare data in a different way from someone who just learned how to cook. And from the data preparation perspective, it's the same thing. Maybe someone who is very good at programming, but know little about data science, or for some other people who has a deep knowledge in a particular domain, but don't is not very familiar with programming. So we have to think about how to enable everyone with different level of expertise to prepare data easily. That's why it's also very, very hard. So the last reason is uh, data preparation is very domain specific. It's very hard to uh, develop a general purpose tool that works for everyone. So there could be some common tasks you can, uh, you can develop a general purpose tool, but for some very domain specific task, it's very hard. Say when you prepare data for the finance field is quite different from 
when you prepare data, maybe for the healthcare or the social science. And similar thing uh, for cooking, when you prepare food for say French dish, it's quite different when you prepare food for Chinese dish. So these three reasons that I believe that make data preparation uh, very hard. So the second question is why has this problem uh, not been solved in the past? So data preparation is fundamentally a human in the loop problem, which means that you cannot fully automate it. You have to put a human in the loop and think about how to combine human and machine to solve it. So then a key question is what should be the right user interface for human? So I divide existing uh, solutions, a data prepared solution into three categories based on the interface they provide to the user. Uh, spreadsheet GUI, work, workflow GUI, and notebook GUI. So let's take a look at the spreadsheet GUI. So intuitively, spreadsheet GUI extends Excel user interface by adding more data preparation operator. So when you look at it, it's very similar to Excel. But the difference is you have more operator. Say I can do the data extraction. I can do the data standardization, which some fun this functionality may not be provided by the Excel. So here is a screenshot of the trifecta, which is a leading company uh, in this area. So another type of user interface, what I call here is a workflow GUI. So the idea here is a uh, uh, when you do data preparation, you are trying to construct a DAG. So DAG is a, uh, is a graph. And so each node represents an operator. So as you can see here, the node can be the filter, cross tab, and join. And it has this drag and drop interface. You don't have to write any code. You just uh, say, I want to join two table. I, I drag a join operator and put it on the uh, on the, uh, on, the uh, on the interface. And then once you construct this, this DAG, and then you can put your data on the left-hand side, and then it will go through this whole DAG and then produce the prepared data. Okay, so here I show you the screenshot of uh, Alteryx, which is also a leading company uh, in this area. Okay. So the third type of GUI is notebook GUI. So this, I think everyone here is familiar with the type of GUI. So, uh, so you can think of, of notebook GUI as a, uh, as a command line. So when we are using command line or terminal, it allows us to type some commands and then it will show you the result. So the difference here is for the notebook, it is more advanced. It, allow, it doesn't show you some text as the output. It can also show you a graph visualization, a table, and any HTML page. And, uh, and also it make it very, very interactive. That's why I call it the advanced version of command line. And so this is the third type of the uh, GUI that pe many people like to use to prepare the data. So what has happened to the past? So what happened is uh, uh, in the past, the industry, people, industry people has realized the importance of data preparation, but their main focus is on the spreadsheet or workflow GUI, uh, and rather than notebook GUI. I think the maybe the main reason is uh, uh, a lot of people who don't have any experience in programming, and they want to enable those people to do data preparation. But as as I showed in the beginning, uh, the survey, those are survey for the data scientists. Data scientists, the people who know programming, uh, who love Python, who love notebook GUI, but those two are not fit for the data scientists because if you use those two, you have to load the data into those system and then do some data preparation and then load it back to your notebook GUI. This back and forth process is not very friendly uh, to the data scientists. So that's why, although there's a lot of efforts on data preparation, this problem hasn't been solved for data scientists. Okay. So then the question is how to solve it in the next five to 10 years. So if you think about machine learning, 
uh, 14 years ago, uh, before secular was started, it was not easy to do machine learning. So if you want to construct machine learning pipeline, you will either look for some library, a different library and compose them together, or there's some functionality is not implemented, you have to implement on your own. But, we, but after Secular was launched and it provided you an all-in-one solution to do machine learning, to construct machine learning pipeline. It make it extremely easier to do machine learning. So that's why their scientists do not complain about that anymore. So for deep learning, uh, about five years ago before PyTorch or TensorFlow was, was created, it's not easy to do deep learning. And uh, you have to write your own code and have a deep understanding of the algorithm. And you have to repeatedly build some common, uh, common deep neural network layers to construct your deep neural network. But because of PyTorch and TensorFlow, those can too, and their sense, many data scientists stop complaining about deep learning and uh, because they can use it to, to easily build a deep learning model. So what I see about data preparation, I think it will be the same in the next five or 10 years. And uh, currently people are complaining about data preparation. I don't think data preparation is a harder problem than machine learning or deep learning that secular or PyTorch try to solve. It, it may as hard as those two problems, but not harder. So the reason it's hard is because we don't have a good tool to solve it. And I hope that data prepare, data prepare library that I present today can be such a tool, maybe in five to 10 years and the people can say, oh, I don't com com complain about data preparation because of the data prepare tool that I'm using. So uh, then the question is, uh, what's unique about our library uh, compared to the open, uh, commercial software, first, uh, we are open source. So I'm a big believer in open source because I think the right way to solve this problem is we have to build a community. And uh, uh, secondly, the, it's, it's designed for the Python data science ecosystem, which means that it works very well with other Python library you are going to work with. And the third uh, selling point is designed for the notebook users. So you can easily call this library and then use it to prepare data in the notebook environment, which is a familiar environment that you are very, very familiar with. So <clears throat> to compare with some other existing Python library who can also do data preparation. So we also have three uh, selling points. First, we aim to build an all-in-one uh, library, which means that we want to include include the solution to as many data preparing problems as possible. So we, we got this idea from Secular because before the Secular was started, there's still some many, uh, there's still uh, many Python library who can also do say feature selection or SVM library who can help you to build a M, M, uh, machine learning model. But Secular basically integrate all of them together you know, very nicely and provide you a unified interface. So, so we want to learn from it and then provide an all-in-one solution for the data preparation. Uh, the second unique selling point is, is we want to make as fast as possible because data preparation is a human in the loop process. We have to make sure it's interactive. So you don't want human to run a function and then ask that person to wait maybe one minute or one hour to see the result. So then it won't work. So we have to make sure every function to be interactive and, uh, and uh, we apply the parallel computation to achieve this goal. So the last but not least, so we have this uh, innovative idea called task-centric API design. So the idea which I'm going to show you later is uh, when you do data preparation, sometimes you know what you want to do, but you don't know how to do it. So why can't we have an API that only asks you to specify what you want to do? And then our system can, can automatically figure out how to do it. So that's a key idea of task-centric API design. So currently our library has three components. Uh, 
beta-prepare.eda, which aim to simplify exploratory data analysis, a connector module, and which aim to simplify the web data connection, uh, collection, and also the clean module, which aim to simplify data cleaning. So <clears throat> we are also planning to add two more modules, one is a data prepare dot feature, which aim to simplify feature engineering, and also data prepare dot integrate, which aim to simplify data integration. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, introduce you uh, the, the three existing components that we, we have implemented so far, and also for each component, I'm going to show you a short demo. Uh, so data prepare dot EDA. So this is uh, the first task centric exploratory data analysis in Python. We recently published a paper uh, at Sigma conference, which is a top tier conference uh, in the data in data management. So what is the EDA? So whenever you have a data set, the first step you do is the EDA. So the EDA is a process of understanding data and discovering insights by creating visualizations data summarization. So here I'm going to show you one example. Say you have a customer table and there's a column called age and you want to understand your customer. You want to understand the age column. So what you are going to do? You're probably going to create some statistics. Say what is the minimum value? What is the maximum value? What is the median? What is the average? You may also create a histogram like I show you here to see the distribution of your customer uh, for, the, uh, for, the, for the age column. Or you can also create a boss plot to see whether there are some outlier uh, in your customer table. Okay. So by doing this, you can have a good understanding of your data. So currently there are two solutions that people typically used to do EDA. The first one, I call it the plot-centric EDA, where you can use Panda to manipulate the data and then use some plotting library like Matplotlib or Seaborn and to create the visualization. Uh, but the issue with this solution is those plotting library, they are not designed for EDA. They are designed for plotting. So there's a gap of using those library to do EDA. So to show you why that's the case, so consider the previous example, user want to understand the age column. So you have to write code to generate the statistics I show you here, and also write code to generate this visualization, write code to generate this visualization. And you have to repeatedly do it for any new data set you have, for any new column you are interested in, or any feature you are interested in. So it's not good for both beginners because they may not know how to write the code. Also not good for experts because you have to repeatedly write the let's say at the code. So that's, the, 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 uh, that's why I think this is not a good solution if you want to do EDA. So another solution is a, I call it a profiling centric EDA. So the idea here is a, I can call a single line of code to generate a comprehensive report for your data set. Uh, but the issue with this solution is the uh, first is slow because EDA should be an interactive process, which you have the data, you do some kind of data cleaning that you visualize again, that you see the results and do it again. If you only use it too, it will, every time it will generate a report and it may take several minutes or even hours to generate report then you cannot really use it to for your interactive EDA process. The second issue with that is very hard to customize because it has hundreds of parameters. If you want to change some parameter, you have to look into the documentation and figure out how to modify it. So that's the issue for those profiling central EDA. So in summary, there are two existing EDA solutions. One is a pro, uh, plotting centric EDA, which is not easy to use. The other one, the profiling centric EDA is slow and also not easy to customize. So our idea is uh, we want to have this task centric EDA. It's a, first it's a declarative. 
which means you only specify what you want to do rather than how to do it. For example, you can say, I want to understand the age column, but you don't have to tell the system what statistic, what visualization you want to create for this particular task. The system can help you to do it. The second thing is it can support a variety of tasks, including not only cost green tasks like generating a report for the entire data set, also fingering the task. Say, I want to understand a single column, or I want to understand the relationship between these, these two columns. Okay, so because of this idea, we are able to achieve three design goals. It's very easy to use. It gives you interactive speed and also very easy to customize. So since we released it, uh, so we got a lot of user feedback. So we post it on Reddit and this, uh, and the Reddit user was super excited about our library. So these were the, the most popular posts in the Python subreddit on that day. So as you can see, the user, this user said that I will look into it and get back to you. By the way, what you guys are doing is amazing has the potential to be a game changer if you cut some time out of data prepare. This user said, this will save me so much time, even just exploring my data, not to mention coding all, all of it up. You've done good in the world. So they said, time will tell if this is the right solution, but at least I think you are tapping the right problem. Thanks for sharing. So we have also looked into uh, some, uh, what user said about our like, uh, library in most, Details. So we look into uh, some posts on Kaggle and also some blog posts from the uh, from media. So here's a user which uh, create a post on on uh, a notebook on the Kaggle. So he said that I recently got to know about Panda profiling, which I can generate the EDA report in a few seconds. Panda profiling is a profiling centric EDA tool. But now I found a better solution called the data preparer. It is faster than panda profiling and also customizable. So the reason that people like our data preparer because it's faster and also easy to customize. So there's also a blog post from Toral Data Science say, say that seven cool Python packages uh, calculators are using without telling you. That's a catchy title. So so it, it said that the, the reason this user likes data prepare because it's the most comprehensive auto EDA tool. Okay. So now I'm going to show you a quick demo and uh, to, to tell you, uh, to show you how easy to use the library to do EDA. So I'm going to use it a Titanic data site so, uh, to show this demo. So for this data site, the goal is to predict uh, survival on the Titanic and, and each row represents a, a passenger and it has a label whether it survived or not. Okay. So, uh, so here you can see it's in the notebook GUI environment. Uh, at the beginning, you can import the, the relevant function from our library, and then you can load this uh, data set in CSV. So uh, as a data frame, and the first task you want to do is you want to have a quick overview of your data. What you can do is you can run this plot df function. Then it will uh, generate a visualization like this for each column. It will generate either a, ball, uh, a bar chart for the categorical column or the histogram for the numerical column. So this is the age column. And it will also show you the statistics of your data, telling you how many variables, how many rows, how many missing cells, what's the standard missing cell, and highlight some uh, some value you should pay attention to. It will also automatically generate some insights, saying passenger ID is unique, uniformly distributed. Maybe when you build a machine learning model, you should use it as your feature, and uh, you can see all the insights it generated. So then you can have a high level overview of your data. Uh, by the way, it will also show you the insights here. For example, it says that age has a, a lot of missing values that you have to pay attention to the missing value for the age column. So you can see the distribution of each column. 
So after that, you may be seeing, oh, the data have many missing values. I want to have a deep understanding of the missing value. Then you, you don't have to tell the system how to do it. You just tell the system, I want to understand the missing value by calling this single line of code. Then it will generate further statistics to tell you how many columns are missing, how many rows are missing, and bar chart for each column. It show you each column is missing and another missing column is a carbon column and spectrum. It show you, we tell you which row has a missing value and the heat map telling the correlation about the, of the missing value of the different rows and also the uh, dendrogram. You can understand more about the correlation of the missing value between the columns. So, and another task you probably want to do, especially when you do machine learning is you want to understand, you want to do the feature selection. You want to know which feature is highly correlated with your label, which is not, and which two features are highly correlated, which means they are redundant. So you can call this single line of code called flawed correlation. So then it will first show you the statistics to tell you the highest uh, maybe Pearson correlation, the lowest uh, Pearson correlation. And it will use different metrics to calculate the correlation. And then you can see uh, this is a survival, survival column. And you can see which uh, this is a fair, the correlation is 0 0.26. So this P class has a negative correlation with uh, your survival, which is a pre-data label. So you can use different metrics to calculate the correlation because they measure different kinds of correlation. Okay. So then after this point, you may think, oh, age is a really interesting column. I want to have a deep understanding of the age column. Then you just need to put the age here. And then it will show you the comprehensive mini report for the age columns with all the statistics and then the histogram and the KDE plot and the QQ plot telling you whether it follow normal distribution and the both plot, you can see there's some outlier. You, this tell you it has 11 outliers and also the value table, it tells you there are 30 customer whose age is 24 27, whose age is 22, okay, and, and so on. It show you the missing value, okay. So another thing I want to show you, you can also customize your, 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 your visualization. You can see here, it show you the associated parameter with this particular visualization. It show you 10 group. If you want to change it to say 100 group, you just need to do this. You can see it will show you 100 group. So that's why I said it's very easy to customize. You can say, oh, I only want to show the value table. Then you can do this. Oh, sorry, there could be a bug here. Uh, let's see. Uh, value table, maybe not value table. Let me see the histogram. Okay, so there's a bug. We can get it fixed. That's why open source project is very good. You can quickly fix it later. Uh, if I say I only want to show the histogram, then you can. Uh, do this, then you can share the visualization with your, your colleague and you can also customize it. It tells you all the associated parameter with this visualization. You can change the, the number of beans here. Say here is a 50, but I want to change it to, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, okay. I, know, I know the problem. Okay, so then you can change the, the number of beans uh, to 500. So it's, it's very easy compared to matplotlib or pandas profiling. And uh, you can easily create a nice visualization like this using this length code. And also the way you create it is kind of interactive. You don't have to remember all the parameters here. 
Okay, so if you want to understand the categorical column and uh, you just use the same function, you can see the same function and the system will figure out, oh, this is a category column. And then I need to generate a different kind of visualization, say uh, the bar chart, the pie chart, the word cloud, and the word frequency, the word length, and also the value table. Okay. So you can also do the bivariate analysis. Say I want to understand the relationship between age and the sex. Then you can do this. It will generate the uh, corresponding visualization. And you want to understand the relation between age and fair. It will generate scatter plot, uh, has been plot, plot plot. And also you want to say, I, I want to compare two data frames. Say I want to get all the rows whose survive is equal to zero, but all the rows whose survival is one. I want to compare the two data frames. Just need to do plot diff. It will uh, generate uh, the visualization to compare the two data frames. Say the number of variables, the number of rows, the missing cells, and then you can see the difference of the visual, uh, the, the distribution of the each column uh, for the two data sets. Okay, so in the end, you can also generate a comprehensive report uh, by running create a report DF and show browser. Uh, it will generate a, a HTML page. And then you can uh, save it and share it with your, your, your colleagues. So it includes all the visualization I showed you before. So you can see here, I have the, uh, can, can see uh, this is a Pearson, it's a missing value. Okay. Okay, so I hope I can convince you that uh, if you want to do EDA, please use dataprepare.eda. It can save you a lot of time. So next, I'm going to uh, quickly go through the other two libraries. So one is the uh, data prepared clean. So its idea is also the uh, task centric. So what is the data cleaning? So data cleaning means you have the dirty data and you're going to get the clean data. And you have a list of tasks you want to do in order to go from dirty data to the clean data. So here is the example table. And if you look at carefully, you will find many issues for the table. First is for the columns, you don't want to have this special character. And for the phone, it's not standardized. It has different formats. For the date, it's also not standardized. And for the city column, it has some typo, has the duplicate values. So you have a number of tasks you want to do. You want to clean the header you want to clean the phone, you want to clean the date, you want to uh, dedupe on this column. So next I'm going to show you a quick demo to tell you how you can do it uh, using data prepare. Okay, so uh, first I, I, I load the data, that's the data I show you on the slide. As I mentioned, there are four tasks you want to do. The first task is you want to clean the column header, then you just need to run this line of code, clean header. So you can see it will tell you after running this line of code, you have a very nice format header, which will remove the character and also the dots. Okay. So the second task is you want to clean the phone number. So you can call this line of code clean phone and the phone number. And 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 then you can see it will generate a new column called clean column by standardize this column. You can see all the phone number will be in the standardized format. To see it more clearly, let's only look at these two columns and see for this one it's converted to this format and also this, even it can, can even handle the complicated format like this with the extension and convert a, the format like this. Okay. And also the junk, it can convert it to this phone number. Okay. And uh and then you know that for the date column, right? It we also need to standardize it. Similarly, you can call the clean date and specify your add to the format. So you can see it will generate a, a new column called date clean. 
by standardize this column so we can see it more clearly. So you can see this is converted to this format, this is to convert to this format, this is converted to this format. It's standardized by a single function. So in the end, so you want to uh, detect the duplicate values on this column. So this is a very cool, uh, cool function that we implemented. So you can see there's some, this is the data frame you have so far. So you, you say, I want to uh, clean this column. So before we do it, let's look at this column. Say I can do the plot DF city. We can see uh, there are many duplicates. These two should be converted to Vancouver. This should be converted to the Toronto. And if you do some analysis over the dirty data, it won't give you the right result. That's why we need to clean the data. So you can call a function called clean duplication DF, so basically the column name. So then it will generate a, a GUI for you. And you are going, it, it have different clustering methods. You can cluster the column using different methods. Say I'm going to cluster based on the fingerprints. You can see the two have the same cluster. Then you say, oh, I want to merge them. You can specify what you want to merge to. And you here you can also say I want to merge them. And then what's nice about it, you can click it, it will automatically ask for the code uh, in Python. And uh, say I want to replace this with this, replace this with this. And you can try different other uh, clustering methods. Say here, Toronto, Toronto. I change it to oh, I change it to Toronto, Ottawa, Vancouver. And do it again. It will generate the code for you. Then you can say finish. Then it will give you a clean column. Say Vancouver all standardized. Uh, Toronto is all standardized. Then you can visualize this data frame again. So look at the bar chart. It uh, deduced the, the column, and it said that there are four rows. Uh, has the Vancouver. But here it says only two rows has a Vancouver. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, the last component I want to introduce you is called connector. It gives you a unified API. It's a unified API wrapper to simplify web data connection. So we know that there are many websites provide invaluable data sites. Like Twitter has a social media data, Yelp has a business data, DBLP has a publication data. So there's a repo that lists all the websites provide you the free API, which you can get the data from. And so then the question is, if you want to use those API to get the data, it's, it's very tedious and also time consuming because you have to download the, the, the wrapper and maybe the Twitter wrapper and then learn how to use it and then to try it. If you want to get the Yelp data, you also have to download the its wrapper and then learn how to use it and then and then and then uh, use it. So and also you have to maintain those wrappers by yourself. So our idea is can we unify the API wrapper and provide uh, a, a unified interface that can get data from any website. So this is our API which means that you can call the connect function and then specify the website name and also the authentication and also tell you uh, how, how many API require you want to send the server per second. And after that, you can understand the, the, the website, say showing how many table in that website and also get a schema of each table. So in the end, you can query your table by using this API, okay. Which means that you can use this unified API to get data from Twitter, Yelp, and any, any place, excuse me. Okay, so this is good because first it's very easy to maintain. And second is it's very easy to learn. You don't have to learn different interface for different API. Okay, so I'm going to show you a very quick demo. Say, imagine, you want to get data from DBLP, which is a publication website. You want to get all the ACL 
2021 publications, and then you want to understand what the hot topics in ACL 2021. So you want to generate a word cloud like this. So later I'm going to show you by writing three lines of code, you can do this. Okay. So this is three lines of code you need to write. First, you connect DBLP and say, I want to issue five API requests per second. It can accelerate the data downloading time. And then you can query the table in DBLP, which is a publication, and put your query here, and then uh, put the count here. And so what's nice about here is uh, because DBLP, it only allow you to, uh, it will only return uh, 30 publications for each API request. And, but for, for us, you can specify more than 30 because we can do the auto pagination. Okay. You also don't have to figure out how to issue multiple API requests to get all the publication from ACL uh, 2020, sorry, 2021. Okay. So then you can use the plot function. Say I want to understand the paper title column. So by writing, uh, running three lines of code. So you, you get the data from DBLP. So you can see this is the uh, uh, the, the word cloud, the hot topic in ACL 2021. You can see it has a detection, translation, language model, knowledge, machine prediction, and the neural, neural network entity. So that's very interesting. Okay. All right. So, uh, so data provider is still a very uh, young project. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are still developing it uh, heavily. So in 2021, this is a roadmap. So for data prepared uh, we want to make the plots look more attractive. And we want to add a new function, allow data scientists to understand multiple data frames. Say once you have a database, it has thousands of tables. How can you understand thousands of tables? Or you have a data lake, has so many different files. How can you quickly understand the data in a data lake? We want to implement the two functions to allow you to do it. And for the connector, so we have a new sub project in the data prepare called the connector X. So here's the URL. So what we did is we have a faster, we have a faster implementation of read cycle. And so this is a performance. So if you have the experience of using read cycle in pandas, if you get data about 10 gigabytes, it will take you about 20 minutes. But with connector X, we can have 10 times speed up, and you only need about maybe two minutes to get uh, to get about 10 gigabytes of data. Okay, so it's very, very fast. Uh, you can look at it, the project through this website. Uh, for the clean module, we want to implement more clean functions uh, like the clean email and clean country, clean address, and the clean uh, credit card, many, many functions, and, uh, and explore different applications. So this is an example showing the clean country that we have already implemented by running this single line for code. You can standardize the country column. Okay. Uh, so in the end, uh, I, I, I want to end my, pro uh, my talk with this slide because uh, I hope everyone can, uh, can join our community and there are different ways to contribute to the project. You can give us a star on GitHub you can download the project using this line of code, or you can submit an issue or submit a pull request and uh, become a contributor. And we also have a Discord channel which you can join, and 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 then you can learn, you can uh, you can uh, in, uh, directly communicate with other contributor and other user to understand uh, to learn more about the data prepare project. Okay. So thank you very much uh, for inviting me to give this talk. Now 